Hi, this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today's video is in response to a comment that was left on one of my last videos, and I'll put the comment down below here. And they asked, which of my plants in my greenhouse collection could you actually grow as a house plant? Which is a perfectly reasonable question. I very often refer to these as house plants. So what I will do is I will whiz around the greenhouse and show you some of the plants that you can grow quite comfortably in a house and this may well be part one of a series but we'll see what the response is to it so let's get started and we are in okay so i'm not going to mention first of all every single plant genera that i've got growing in here as you can see there's an awful lot of plants growing in the greenhouse at the moment and to be honest i'm falling over things and i'm struggling to find places for the inevitable new purchases that come along every so often probably more frequently than i can afford however that's another story so there's little point in me showing you all the plants that won't grow easily inside a house so i'm just going to focus on the ones that I think will grow inside a house. So before we get into it, there are a few caveats. First of all, not everybody's houses will have the exact same conditions. I'm completely aware of that. So because of that reason, I'm going to have to be very general here. And no doubt there will be some exceptions. There'll be some plants that I show you that you will no doubt put in the comments that they will definitely not grow in your house. Well, that's great. By all means, put it in there. I love to hear from people. I love to see what varying conditions people have. Have. but for those purposes I'm just going to have to be general and just show you what I think would probably grow in the kind of conditions that I'm describing so please take it in the spirit that I'm offering it it's just for fun and perhaps will encourage some people to try something they haven't thought of before so first one I'm going to start with Nepenthes one of my favorites as no doubt you know or you've heard already so Nepenthes absolutely will grow in houses there's no reason why they won't these are absolutely incredible and amazing plants and I really find it difficult to believe that not everybody shares my passion for them they are wonderful there are such incredible amazing products of nature and they really do prove in my eyes anyway uh, what a wonderful thing evolution really is so how could you grow these in the house well first of all i would suggest that you go for something that is a hybrid rather than a species i would also suggest that it's something with a wide range of tolerances you can easily find that information out on the internet go to somewhere like tom's carnivores and it gives you like this big table which gives you all the names of the hybrids you can in fact i think you can actually look it up you can actually type in the name of the hybrid that you're interested in and it will give you the temperature tolerances of that but if you can't be bothered doing that then i would suggest that you go for something like nepenthes ventrata or nepenthes ventricosa or Nepenthes alata. These are all well-established house plants. You need to put them somewhere where it's very bright, not direct sunlight, but somewhere where they're going to get loads and loads of light. And again, depending on what the temperatures that your particular hybrid likes, I would tend to go for something like a kitchen where it's a little bit cooler. Of course, unless you're a south-facing kitchen. If you're a north-facing kitchen like mine, then it's a little bit cooler. It gets some humidity and you could hang it in a similar situation to what I've done here. And then you can get the real close up of these pictures because that's obviously what it's all about. And of course it makes a great talking point. Just imagine being able to wax lyrical to all your friends when they nip round, having a look at these things about what amazing plants they really are, how they entice those insects. Sometimes they're flying insects or not, not necessarily insects. They might just be some other little creature. Um, they entice them when they're on the ground and they have a different set of pictures to entice the flying insects up in the air. How the nectar they produce not only entices but also intoxicates so that they fall in. They perhaps get a little bit drunk and fall in. And maybe you can also tell them about how viscous the liquid is inside. In fact, this one actually has a little spider. Can you see that little tiny spider in the... It's only just opened actually, but in the neck there. And that's, uh, spiders could do do that. This one hasn't actually got any liquid in at the moment. Can't feel any, but no doubt it will produce some. It's no doubt in response to the lowering temperatures in this side at the moment. So yeah, you can tell them about how viscous this liquid is and it won't allow the animals to escape or to swim. And then of course it goes on to digest the 
contents. Really interesting stuff. So I think an Nepenthes would make a brilliant house plant, so why not give it a go? So let's move on to number two, so begonias. Begonias are well-established house plants, and they've been house plants for many, many years, even going back to Victorian times. So this is begonia curly fire flush, absolutely beautiful plant. And I think the begonias are so popular as house plants. Number one, because they can tolerate lower light levels, which is always an issue, or usually an issue in houses. It's certainly an issue in the UK in houses for house plants. But I think also because of the year round interest. So for many house plants, you're only going to get blooms at certain times of the year. But with the begonia, you've got the absolutely wondrous foliage as well as the blooms which very often come as like an added bonus so taking all into consideration you know what's not to like for a house plant and they can also come at various sizes as well this one is relatively small but of course we've got the much much bigger begonia fuchsioides which is over here and of course it's losing most of its blooms now as the temperatures drop over in this side of the greenhouse still on begonias over here i'm actually over in the intermediate side so we've got begonia silver lace looking absolutely Absolutely spectacular here a real beauty and you can imagine that in like a darker corner of a house or a room in a house and that would really brighten it up wouldn't it I've not seen the blooms on this one yet but I'm sure they will be a nice surprise when they do turn up and of course we've got begonia listada over there and again the well-established begonia whitey eye and that one has some beautiful blooms at the moment over here we've got the griffon which isn't looking that great at the moment recently been pruned that's one that really does need a little bit extra light in my opinion and of course you've got the begonia luxuriance which is in bloom over here so i would say any of these because i've got them in my intermediate side they don't really want to go down too low for too long which of course generally isn't a problem in a house the ones that i've got over in the cooler side that i've just been showing you recently they will take a little bit lower temperatures i'm not saying that they won't survive when they're kept warmer they'll be absolutely fine with that it's just that if you are going to put them in a conservatory just beware that if that conservatory and i know many of them can mine can it can go really quite low overnight so especially in winter so if that's the case you might find that your struggles a little bit and you might have to move it somewhere a little bit warm well at least the temperature is over 15 degrees next up are the cyclum and persicum hybrids so again these aren't generally grown for the leaves they're grown for the blooms but in the uk they are grown specifically the the cyclum and persicum hybrids specifically for the house plant market and that's because they look so fantastic and they bloom for so long over the winter months and not many plants do actually bloom over the winter months so as you can see the ones that i've actually got in bloom here at the moment are ones that were fairly recently purchased the ones that I've brought back to life, as it were, brought back out of dormancy, like this one. Somebody did comment on the absolutely gorgeous leaves on this one. No idea what it's called. I know it's just a hybrid of cyclamen and persicum, and you can see it's got a little bud there. So they're a little bit slower coming out into flower, but these will make a superb display very quickly, uh, and they'll carry on right the way through to February, March time for me. Now, they're very, very cheap. They're small, they're compact, which generally means the same as small. Um, but they won't, of course, grow in every room of the house and they won't grow in certain countries. Somebody recently commented on one of my Cyclamen posts that they've had to give those away because they live in a, an apartment building, not many rooms, very warm, and Cyclamen really don't want to be anywhere above like 18 degrees Celsius. They'll do much better if they're somewhere between 15 and 18, just a little bit cooler. So if you've got a room in your house that is just a little bit cooler, then they'll do really well in there. They certainly don't want to be in a direct sun or direct line of the sun. They're always a great addition to any house. Okay, number four are the streps. Of course, how could I ignore the streps? So, I mean, just look at the display given to me in November from the streptocarpus. You know, we're, we're almost uh, at winter time here. It's absolutely freezing outside. 
I keep it to 12 degrees in here, but look at the display that I've got. And I've had this for months and months and months. So much variety, so many colors, so many different forms and shapes. So every flower that you can see there, with the exception of a tiny little pelagonium that you probably can't even spot, the rest of them are streptocarpus and the same up here. So they are superb for houseplants. Streptocarpus have long been used as houseplants in the UK. So it's nothing new there. So I would definitely suggest that you get yourself some streptocarpus. If you're a little troubled by the leaves, because the leaves can get pretty long and it can look like they're taking over the thing, just do as I do and snip them off. They're so quick at growing leaves and they do get very big, certainly on some hybrids of streptocarpus, that I would suggest you simply snip them off where they look like they're too long. And the plant will not even skip a beat. It will be perfectly happy and carry on producing those lovely blooms as long as you've got those temperatures you know, reasonably high as you would in a house. Anything above 15, they'll be fine. They do go down to 12. They probably go down quite a bit lower than that. I think they can go down to about five degrees, but obviously you're not gonna have that problem in a house. And of course, if you can keep them out of direct sun, they will last even longer for you. They really prefer to be in brighter light. Now I've seen on Gardener's World, Monty talking all about keeping his in the shade and how they grow much better for him in the shade. Well, that's fine for him if that's what works for him, but I've seen by far the ones that's under the bench for me, the ones that are in the darkness, down there take at least five to five weeks to two months to actually bloom compared to the ones that are in the light so i think providing you give them enough light they will bloom they might be a little slower if they're in the dark now i'm going to struggle to show you these so i'm going to show you a species one so this purple one here is a species pelagonium now i don't expect people to buy the species pelagoniums but the actual hybrid pelagoniums that most people buy are again a long established house plant now of course i can show you loads of leaves so i've got some leaves here loads of leaves why have mine not in bloom anymore well because the temperature in here now is too low for them again we're at 12 degrees at the moment so there's another pelagonium there this one's a trailing one if i was to put them over into the warmer or intermediate side at 15 and no doubt they'd come back into bloom again but pelagoniums are fantastic to keep in the house and they will bloom for you all year round in fact just today i actually said to one of my garden customers why don't you let me dig up those pelagoniums over there that he has in pots as bedding put them in some uh, little plant pots i said you can stick them on your windowsill and they will give you blooms all year round and he looked at me as if to say why on earth would i want to do something like that so his plan was to just dig them up and toss them into the bin which is such a shame i never thought actually i should have said i'll have them off you uh, but yeah, there are some absolutely beautiful pelagoniums. Unfortunately, I can't show you them at the moment. I've got loads of videos on my pelagoniums, but I would definitely suggest that that is something that will keep you nice and happy throughout the winter months because you've got those fantastic blooms and it will give you lots of memories of the Mediterranean or it certainly evokes some Mediterranean image in your head. So next up are ferns. So I showed this recently. This is a maidenhair fern that I've recently purchased. But did you know that maiden hair ferns come from a great big massive group of maiden hair ferns and loads called maiden hair and they're not all exactly the same they're all pretty you know they all have something different about them so you could actually collect them i think they're wonderful of course they're great for in the house because they tolerate the shade and they do like to be watered quite a lot and again i've recently showed this so i'm going to show you something i've not really dwelled on too much recently and that is this phlebodium so i'm just going to drop to the floor with this because it's absolutely huge so this is my phlebodium aureum divana and it's a little bit of a wonky shape because it's that big it's hitting the roof of the greenhouse and that's bending the fronds there I don't know if you can hear the lovely crispy crunch that it makes. This is a fern and this is tough as old boots. They really are tough things. I neglect it, something rotten. How do I neglect it? Well, I don't do a great deal with it. I really don't water it anywhere near as much as I should. Now, bear in mind, this is a fern, but these are ferns that they're happy to be wet, they're happy to be moist, but they will also tolerate being left for quite a long time. Providing they can get moisture down in these, if I can show you here, 
down in these hurry rhizomes down here, can you see down there? They pick up the moisture from the atmosphere. Now, as I'm very fond of saying in this country, it's always wet and it's always humid. And my greenhouse is pretty much, you know, no matter what I do, it's generally round about 70 to 90% humidity. But this will do really well in a house. It will do okay in the shade and you can even mount them. So here is one that I mounted a while back. I can't remember how long it is. So that would have been December 2020. So as I make this video, we're just short of a year ago. And you can see it's perfectly happy there. So long as you cut off a little bit of the rhizome, and keep it moist well <laughs> i say keep it moist as i say i very rarely water it but it still is okay perhaps if i watered it a bit more it would do even better but that's something that you might want to give a try and still on phlebodium so we've got this other one here this one's looking really nice at the moment i've recently cut some dead fronds off this one i think i've just got it as phlebodium aureum so i don't know what hybrid this is it was a purchased one whereas the one above you very often find them in orchid pots. No, it doesn't look quite as spectacular, quite as unusual. I suppose it's a weed in many countries, but for me, it has that little bit of greenery. So I really like these ferns. Um, I think the greenhouse would be worse without them. So as mentioned at the start of the video, Caleria are great as houseplants. I can only show you one little measly bloom here because it really isn't the season for them. So this one has bloomed floriferously in the past. Absolutely fantastic in the past. I've got some great videos showing you how well that looked. But all I do at this time of the year is I just trim them back a bit and then you start to get the new leaves coming on them. They do get leggy eventually over time but they respond really well if you prune them right the way back i have got another one over here that let's just have a look that's probably due for a prune back these are sold in the uk as plants that go dormant and indeed you can allow them to go dormant you can just be left with a rhizome nothing above uh, soil level that's the kind of advice for over in the uk however if you keep them as a house plant you don't need to do that you can keep them all year round and they'll keep blooming until they get really leggy and you've got to cut them back and then they'll start all over again so don't feel that you've got to allow them to have a dormancy in the wild they rarely go dormant they actually keep growing all year round so that's something that you might want to give a try to and if you're interested in caloria have a look at the video i'll stick a card up somewhere okay so that's just seven genera of the plants in my greenhouse that i think you could quite successfully grow in a house i think i've also got loads more that you could grow in a house and if you're interested give me a thumbs up write a comment down below and we'll see if it's worth doing a part two and if the begonias caught your eye i'm going to put a video card up now all about begonias so i think you should go and watch that and for now i'll see you on the next one bye